a Thai food restaurant in Los Gatos, California, which is near San Francisco, called Coup de Thai, has been sued by a woman who says that their Dragon Balls were so spicy that they actually burnt her vocal cords and that she's been injured and suffered chemical burns inside her body uh, because they did not provide her with uh, any of the traditional uh, ways to sort of uh, get rid of uh, the effects of uh, spicy food like yogurt, milk, or things like that, and basically just left her to be burnt and now she's suffering from medical problems that have been diagnosed by doctors. I'm Kevin Newper. I'm an attorney at Newper and Covey, and I want to walk you through this lawsuit. Uh, whether uh, t spicy uh, chili peppers or, or that, are, that are being used in food can really cause burns like this, and uh, what are the chances of liability for this restaurant that she's saying uh, did not prepare the food properly and made their Dragon Balls so spicy that her, she was just sort of nuked by them. All right, here's the lawsuit. I may butcher some of the names here, but I'm going to do my best. And I'm at a disadvantage because I'm a Texan, so everything comes out messed up anyway. So uh, you have uh, the plaintiff, which is Harjaslin Walia, and uh, she's the one suing, saying that she suffered these, this injury at the Thai restaurant. Then you have the restaurant itself, Coup de Thai, and you have the owner of the restaurant, which is, which is Tanacha uh, Swangchang. Uh, I hope I got it close, and if not, I apologize. Uh, let me show you before we jump into lawsuits sort of what this restaurant is and who uh, the founder is, uh, just based on uh, their LinkedIn profile. So here's their um, uh, just some Bing search results for Coup de Thai. Uh, you can kind of see uh, some photos of them, photos of their food. Uh, there's a little close up of something there. Um, looks like they get you know at least decent race rating, 4.5 on TripAdvisor, and they're kind of you know uh, doesn't look like it's some. Ter These are the Dragon Balls right here, so you can see. The, this is what she ate, uh, and it's and they've got a big chili pepper there, and it's uh, supposed marketed, I guess, as being like a super spicy, um, you know, chili thing. Let's go to their website and see if we can see if their website loads. And if it takes too long, then I'll just show you the uh, LinkedIn page because this was interesting of the owner of Kuda Thai. So this is uh, uh, Tanacha. Uh, it doesn't really say whether this is male or female or or, or whatever, um, but then uh, you can see that Tanacha is. Uh, the interesting part was was apparently in Thailand was a pop singer with national celebrity status. So uh, for like five years, uh, they were when they were younger, they were uh, like a pop star and then came to the U.S. and were doing kind of interesting jobs, you know, uh, computer science and then a web administrator and then kind of started at the ground up on, at restaurants. And then now this person is um, actually an owner of like, it looks like the Coup de Thai, Three Seasons Thai Bistro, CFO of these two other Thai restaurants. So became kind of a restaurateur after being a pop star. And, uh, but now it's being sued over the spice and it looks like their website is down. So, uh, that is the, that is coup de Thai and, and who they are. Okay. Back to the lawsuit itself. And let's see, like, is this, you know, and you can kind of judge for yourself. Do you think it's real? Do you, whose side do you think is true here? Uh, just based on what we look at and what we'll see kind of, uh, in a little bit. So, uh, the plaintiff, uh, Miss Walia says that she's suing the restaurant. She's suing when it says does one through 25, she's naming, um, restaurant employees, uh, the reason they do that is not really because they care about serving the or, or, or suing rather the the server. <laughs> they, they don't care about suing the waiter so much, other than for the reason that that would probably kick in the insurance policy of the restaurant. So the the waiter is an agent of the owner, which means that the owner is responsible in general under what's called agency law for what the waiter does. You're supposed to supervise your employees. You have to you can't just let them run around doing stuff that's negligent or that uh, hurts people, and so. That's the reason that we start seeing all this stuff about, oh, I'm suing the, uh, the anyone who's like, you know, was an employee who was responsible for this. So you can see they say these does, uh, does usually, it means like John Doe or Jane Doe. And so it's someone who you don't know their identity, but you know, you think they may be responsible for your injury. So they're suing the server, who would be the waiter, the chef preparer of the food, who made these Dragon Balls. And then whoever else was involved in any way in designing, preparing, participating, or creating the Dragon Ball dish. And uh, again, that is all about tagging in the insurance so that there's someone who can actually pay uh, the money for this uh, injury if, if they win. Um, so they give some background and they say basically, um, Coup de Thai is this Thai restaurant. Um, it's a bar and restaurant that is in Los Gatos, California. They say the restaurant's menu features many spicy traditional Thai dishes. The restaurant advertises its dining experience as a true revolution of your senses. Fireworks light up your mouth from our traditional menu that puts the true Thai back in command of Thai food. And so uh, Miss Walia says that she went in with one of her friends and they were um, what they call lawful customers at Coup de Thai, which means I guess they showed up and they did like they weren't trespassing. They were like just real customers. Um, they ordered appetizers and they got this dish called the Dragon Balls. And they say that this dish was advertised as spicy. So Miss Walia, the plaintiff, 
um, asked the server to have it made with less spice because she does not tolerate spicy foods is how they phrase it. I don't know if that means she's allergic or just doesn't like spicy or whatever, um, does not tolerate is kind of vague language to me. So it, I can't really tell, are they really going to have something there on like a food allergy or something like that? Um, then she, she says the server told them that, that they would have the chef make it less spicy. And then the dish comes out, uh, Miss Walia starts eating it. It says almost immediately plaintiff felt her entire mouth. The roof of her mouth, her tongue, her throat, and her nose burned like fire. Plaintiff's eyes and nose watered, and she began coughing. They told the waitress, Doe 1, right away that yogurt or something like that, some other milk product, was needed because the dish was too spicy. However, the server said, we don't have yogurt. No milk, ice cream, yogurt, sour cream, or other dairy product was provided or offered to Miss Walia to quell the obvious bur burning. And it says, uh, dairy products are well known as an extinguisher of the heat from spicy foods. Spicy foods contain a substance from chilies called uh, capsaicin. Uh, and capsaicin stings uh, taste buds and, and milk binds with the hot capsaicin oils to disperse them. Cold water is not effective to mitigate spiciness because water based liquids just spread it around and increase the sensation. So, and that is true generally. If you uh, get something spicy, drink some milk. And don't, water will not help you. Water will make it worse. And that's, uh, most people know that. But if you don't, uh, you know, now, you, now, you know, and so, um, they say that basically she started drinking coconut water instead. I'm not sure if there's any reason why coconut water would help or maybe hurt, hurt. Um, but the, that didn't help. And then it says she began to lose her vo voice. And the reason was because she later got diagnosed with a chemical burn to her vocal cords, a chemical burn to, um, burn basically to the, her right nostril and her nose, and then a chemical burn to her esophagus and why is she suing, right? So she takes, she eats the dragon balls. Why would the res restaurant be responsible for that? Well, here's some of, these are called causes of action. They are legal theories for why someone might be responsible for an injury and why you might be able to sue them. First one they're doing is, is something called negligence. That just means that you, you had uh, what they call a duty of care. You had a responsibility to someone because of your position relative to them or how you're interacting with them. Um, like an example would be, if you're driving a car, you have a duty of care to all the other drivers on the road because you're in a car, you could hurt them. You have to be careful about that. Same thing for like a chef preparing food would have a duty of care. Um, like if, let's say if she had a food allergy, um, you know, if that would have made this a little clearer, and this is why uh, you may be able to argue back and forth and I'll sort of give both sides as to what I think the lawyers might say. The plaintiff might say, look, this is just like a food allergy. If I came in and I was allergic to, um, you know, anything like uh, if, if I'm allergic to something and I say, don't put that in my food, take it out of the dish, you know, uh, nuts or something. I cannot have nuts and that they just stick them in there anyway, that's negligence because they've been told something really important. The waiter and the, the chef have a duty of care to you to make sure once they know that, that you're safe. Um, and when they breach that duty of care is what's called just like a contract, a breach, uh, then they can be sued uh, or, or held liable under this negligence theory. So they're saying that basically um, the chefs are, were negligent because they didn't test the heat intensity of the chili uh, that was used in these Dragon Balls. They weren't trained, the defendants are negligent because they didn't train the staff to test their food and they didn't train them to have like some dairy product or they say, they say Thai iced tea might've helped or have something there to like basically, um, the, I think the argument would be like, look, you're a restaurant that advertises yourself as serving all this spicy food and really spicy food like keeps milk on hand, you know, because it's gonna happen, it's it's predictable. And 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 that's an, a thing lawyers will learn a lot about if you're good law school is like our harm is a harm the, the type of injury, something that you can foresee or reasonably foresee, can you predict it? And you could probably predict as a Thai food uh, restaurant owner that someone's going to get a hot chili at some point and may need some milk or yogurt or, or whatever they say uh, might might have helped it. Um, and then you can see here they're talking about they owed a duty of care to their patrons to make sure the food's safe. They have to comply with the regulations and all these uh, rules. Um, and that uh, basically the, this what they did was likely to cause injury because they knew that um, this says specifically, uh, this may have come from online reviews or something, but they say that the, it doesn't really say here. Uh, yeah, I think it does say from social media postings. They, they're they alleging that the restaurant uh, owner and the restaurant had no specific knowledge of multiple persons having complained of excessive spice and or suffering injuries from consuming Thai chili, which was, which was contained in the Dragon Balls at Coup de Thai, which means they'd know about it, right? And, and then they say they didn't, even though they knew this, allegedly, they didn't take any step to like try to stop that to try to prevent their customers from being negligent. And as a result of that, they say she gets these injuries that are sort of permanent, like physical injuries to her uh, body and to her nervous system. And kind of, you know, it's not good to have chemical burns inside your esophagus and your vocal cords for sure. Um, so that's what she, that's her first kind of theory. How can she get money? 
let's look at a couple of these other causes of action before I get into sort of the he said, she said, and, and what some of y'all be thinking and some, uh, you know, any lawsuit like this, it may remind you of the McDonald's uh, coffee spill lawsuit where there's a whole bunch of back and forth. I actually think the McDonald's coffee spill lawsuit, the, the person who got who sued was right in that case. Uh, when you watch the documentary about it, uh, she definitely deserve some money and frankly mcdonald's was acting real bad this case uh we'll we'll walk through what each of them's going to say so this this next one they're suing under it's it's they call it negligence per se uh the idea is like basically you can see it also says violation of this california sherman food drug and cosmetic laws and the health and safety code so what they're saying basically per se means you um regardless of sort of like how uh well you followed your duty or whatever you have violate because you violated safety rules for a product you are just negligent kind of automatically if you're violating those laws even if you aren't really like doing something that would make it negligent otherwise and so that's what they're kind of saying here is hey they violate these laws um they sue under what uh and i haven't seen this before but i guess i've never sued a restaurant <laughs> is that uh, a breach of implied warranty for fitness for human consumption so they're citing a california law that they say says that um the uh, that food has to be like consumable um, and or, or a warranty is when you like make sort of or, or I guess I should say an implied warranty here w warranties in general are promises um, that a good or service will meet like a certain standard of of like you know quality so if you say a car will last 100,000 miles um, you whether you write it out this way or not you are warranting that that when you make that statement if you're selling the car you are you have given someone a warranty a promise that the car will meet that level of quality they're saying that in any kind of food uh, under the uh, this this part of the Cal California law the commercial code all food is sort of inherently or by implication is safe to consume and that makes sense. Like if you go to a restaurant, um, I would be surprised to see the law. Otherwise, uh, that you know, if you go to a restaurant, you think the food's going to be okay to eat. You don't go to a restaurant thinking, I can't eat this and it might hurt me. Um, they do a similar, like strict liability is a similar concept to the negligence per se. Sometimes they repeat these things just in case someone knocks out one of them on a legal argument. They still have others as backup. Um, gross negligence is like a higher form of negligence. It's when you're just... Uh, you can see they sort of lay it out here you lack any care or there's like an extreme departure from a reasonable person would what a reasonable person would do it means you kind of you go further than just someone like uh speeding on the road right you're driving 150 miles an hour down uh a in a school zone that's that is gross negligence because you were just totally out of your gourd to do it whereas if you're driving 35 in a 20 that's not really that's negligence but it probably doesn't rise to like oh this is gross negligence and they give some details here in this one about why they say this was so uh, what they're saying it was this it rises to gross negligence was just that they say the Thai chili pepper is also called the bird's eye chili when dry because it packs a lot of heat. It's about 50 to 100,000 Scoville units, typically 90,000, uh, which on a scale of hotness puts it in between a jalapeno and a habanero pepper. They say they didn't take precautions. They didn't like basically consult with health health officials. If they had, they then they wouldn't have served like this much, uh, uh, you know, I'm not sure what to call the a unit of... Uh, pepper spiciness other than a Scoville unit. <laughs> they, they wouldn't have been this Scoville on the Scoville scale, which I have not really heard of before. I'm, I'm seeing that kind of the first time here. Um, and then premises liability is basically if you control uh, premises is like just a place of business or a place people can go into. Um, so or it could be your house, right? If you invite someone on there. So you're there as a guest. Um, you They're saying you had responsibilities to make sure I wasn't injured uh, because you are the owner or the operator of this premises. And that's a, a form of liability. And then this last one is basically what I was talking about earlier, earlier, the agency law saying that you were negligent in how you supervised your waiter, for, for example, your waitress here, rather, the waitress didn't, according to them, did not tell the chef, hey, don't make this, these Dragon Balls spicy. And the chef did whatever. And that could be what happened here. Like uh, that when we go back into uh, this one, they, I think they're going to lose this eighth cause of action. Just as an attorney, I'll say uh, intentional infliction of emotional distress on these facts. That means you intentionally tried to cause an emotional like damage to someone um i really doubt from what they're saying that that would require someone to just basically like on purpose try to like dump a bunch of spice in there D it does not seem like they have any facts that support that and i and i think that's like a throw in uh which probably will not win um and then they also ask for punitive damages which is just damages to punish them also on these facts seems like it uh, yeah they could but it's not uh as likely with what they've said so what are what 
what's sort of the truth of all this? We can't really know off the, like just from this because we don't even know what the restaurant's going to say. We they made a public statement saying no, these Dragon Balls are not that spicy that they could cause this. Um, so what could the two sides say? Well, the plaintiff might say, we've heard what they've said somewhat, and it could be true that even if the Dragon Balls aren't always too spicy, that uh, they could have made this one wrong, right? They could have dumped way too many peppers in there, and maybe she got this, like, super dose of uh, pepper. I know, uh, so my grandma used to um, keep or, or grow these little tiny peppers uh, they were just like, basically looked like a little tiny berry and she'd put one in the soup. And if you ate the pepper, you were nuked. And I ate that once and it was like super hot. Uh, my dad and my uncles would tell me that uh, they, they had chickens on my grandma. She, it wasn't like a full farm, but she had like a little plot of uh, like uh, stuff she'd grow and, and chickens and things like that. And they claimed that uh, <laughs> the chickens would taste uh, like, like basically they're, they're, if you killed them and ate them, that the, the chicken would just automatically be spicy because they ate those peppers and they just like absorbed it all. I don't know if that's true. Uh, we never ate, or I never ate one of the chickens, but uh, that was the rumor about the peppers that, that I have from my youth. So it could be that they just dumped, like if my grandma had dumped 10 of those peppers in there, we all would have been nuked. And uh, then the question is like, can this stuff actually injure you to that? Well, I looked up a little bit, like can this, in, this sort of stuff in peppers cause a chemical burn inside you? And the answer looks like yes, that there are people who have experienced this. So let's look at that just to see, like, is this something real that she really could have had happened? Some of you who love spicy foods may be looking at this like, no, couldn't happen. I actually can, I'm going to show you an online review to that effect, but uh, can this actually happen? So this is an uh, online re review just so you can so it's show, or see what some people who think that she's wrong are thinking. Um, and it's a guy who he actually didn't like the the, the restaurant because they put some charges on there. But you can see he says that um, he did not like this, them suing them because he he, th he thinks this plaintiff is an absolute moron who doesn't know how to handle spicy food. Uh, I might even venture to say they've never even heard of spicy food. Hey, babe, if you're reading this, I'd like you to know you are a wimp and a coward. Imagine having the audacity to go to a Thai restaurant and ordering the spiciest thing on the menu and then suing the restaurant because it was too spicy for you. WTAF lady. Uh, sad disclaimer, they're not spicy at all, Dragon Balls. So now I'm thinking this person thinks that white bread is spicy. So that was one. Uh, I was actually looking for these reviews that supposedly said that the restaurant had um, like injured people with this before. I could not find it, that. I did find some other people saying, you know, that they had gotten sick from the food, uh, just a couple of them in, on their Yelp. But nobody's saying that the spicy part had made them sick or really even talking about the spice that much. Um, so this guy d thought the Dragon Balls are a joke <laughs> and said that this lady's basically a wimp. Um, but it could, you know... Again, you don't know how much, um, like, did, did she just get, like, a bunch of stuff dumped in there? She kind of seems to be suggesting that maybe someone did it on purpose. Maybe she pissed off her waitress, and then they just retaliated or something. Could be possible. I don't know. Um, like, it... Uh, it could be the, you know, I'm looking at this when I just hear this, I wonder, like, did this coconut water you're drinking hurt it? Um, but then again, what the plaintiff would say, well, okay, maybe that's true. But then why didn't you have milk? Why didn't you have yogurt? Why didn't you have something to deal with? If you have this, if you really are the spiciest Thai restaurant around, then uh, why didn't you have something to sort of help me? Um, could this really have injured her? Let's look at some uh, uh, stuff on whether you can get injured. So here is like, a, this was from the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. This is their webpage. And they're talking about, is an article about uh, this capsaicin injuries from social media challenges. So apparently um, <laughs> kids on TikTok are doing what they do and uh, they, they are eating these uh, basically, I guess, even hotter peppers, the Carolina Reaper and the Scorpion Chili. Uh, they, they love to name these things uh, <laughs> like Dragon Balls and all this other stuff, whatever you can make it sound hotter. Um, so, but apparently, uh, you know, kids in, are deciding like, oh, I'm going to show off and just like eat the hottest thing on record. And this says that they're actually getting like, uh, I think they gave some statistics in here on number of calls. They say, uh, this, just this place in my, in Miami, this one, uh, got 30 calls about, uh, people doing this challenge. There were like, uh, you know, a lot of them are under 14 and they were getting oral burning, abdominal pain, vomiting, and eye pain. Uh, someone got asthma exacerbation. So these people had their symptoms resolve in a few hours. So at least this this would say like, oh no, um, it might be temporary, but I've found some other stuff. So here's, um, this one is, I think, uh, gave numbers about the total amounts. Oh no, this is a study. Um, I've been looking a lot about chilies. <laughs> I'm doing a lot of research online about those. So here it is. It says in 2017, uh, this is a different article from, it's actually like a study. So you can see this is actually a scientific study about uh, what to do if you're exposed to this and treatment for it and this capsaicin. They say in 2017, the American Association of Poison Control Centers reported 2,229 exposures to these peppers or to peppers that had it. 
Um, so that's people who decided like they needed to call the poison control center, 215 of which were treated in at, like some kind of hospital. And then they have a, a bunch of other, other exposures to like pepper spray, which is, you know, not really what this would be here, but just the peppers themselves from eating them, you're having thousands of people a year call in and hundreds of them go to a healthcare. And that's just who calls poison control. So there's probably more people who have stuff like that. Um, they say that, so let's see what they say about the treatment. Um, some of that's just people with pepper spray. Um, but they have sort of, yeah, they're su suggesting some various things for like pain management. And then I also found, um, this talks about sort of rare cases of serious burns. This is from the food and drug administration that's coming from using, um, there's like some medicines, some, some pain relievers that actually use this as an ingredient, but some people have had complications whenever that's happened, which include like blistering, swelling, pain, um, serious burns have been reported sometimes with it, which they say are rare, um, but have happened. So that suggests that that can happen. And this is one, a specific report. Again, this is like a scientific study that did this as a case study about someone who had um, a second degree burn from a high concentration thing of uh, this capsaicin. And so it's possible that um, it, it doesn't strike me as something that couldn't happen um, when you're, and those are kind of severe burn pictures. You can see that went pretty bad. Um, could someone have an allergy? Could someone have a sensitivity? You know, she talks about having that. Um, so it may be that something like that was happening, right? That she actually had some kind of uh, sensitivity to this uh, that, that, you know, maybe she didn't know how sensitive she was, or maybe she did get just the bad batch. She got the one set of Dragon Balls uh, that had stuff in it. Because there, I will say there are, when I went through these reviews, um, there were a decent number of people complaining their food was like prepared improperly or kind of junk and, um, you know, like people who like the place, people who don't. But if you do have that happening, you could have someone just like, she could be the rare, you know, person who just has this happen and, and where it becomes some, you know, horrible, horrible, uh, situation for that one person where it might not have hurt the other person because you know uh, she, she had her uh, friend there who was eating this stuff and I guess apparently didn't have the injury that's one thing the restaurant if you're the restaurant owner what you probably argue is like why didn't it happen to her so it might have to for it to be like sort of a thing it would have probably have to have been some kind of sensitivity like she's saying or something uh, some amount that she got in her dragon ball or whatever or maybe the friend you know didn't eat it and then she ate first and you know it could be like that where if i saw a friend like choking and 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 having something go wrong with the dragon ball i probably would not start eating another dragon ball um so we don't really know those facts we don't know what they're going to say back and forth we have some people already saying you're a wimp you're a loser you suck um, I, I, from me as an attorney looking at this, I don't think you can really tell for sure. Um, it is plausible. This could have happened, even though people sometimes, a lot of these cases, I think what happens is people look at them and go, um, you like, why are you suing this restaurant? That's your, you know, you came to a Thai restaurant, whatever. Um, but there are these duties to kind of, uh, be careful for people. If you're making food, especially it can go wrong. There can be, if you take a dragon ball and those, they literally just look like just balls of, uh, let's see if we can go back to, um, what they look like because they had these photos of, of this thing i mean it's like some kind of chunk of chilies that they just dump into like a, a glazed ball how much did you put in there whatever it can go wrong and the, the thing with that mcdonald's suit where everyone thought oh that's a frivolous lawsuit well actually mcdonald's had had hundreds of people get injured for the same thing uh the woman's burns were super super serious on her genital area um her she had to have really extensive surgeries um, it, it is a much worse case and they were joking about it, which really was, you know, they, they, they their publicists kind of turned it into a joke, uh, nationwide, which really was not appropriate because I think in that lawsuit, she was actually, the reason she was suing is because they had just, there had been so many people injured over time and McDonald's didn't care and didn't fix it until finally people started suing over it. Uh, they just settled with people and then just kept making coffee at temperatures that were, was super extreme. This is a random restaurant. Uh, it would be very easy for this to be one chef one day doing it wrong. I don't know. Um, but I can't tell right off the bat. I don't think it would be fair to really either way uh, make a judgment about this. Maybe, you know, uh, like we'll see the facts. We'll see uh, probably more coming out as the lawsuit goes on. And will will this thing be, uh, will she win? Will she get money? We don't know. We'll find out. Uh, if you want to see more crazy lawsuits, hit subscribe. And I'll, I'm putting out more videos about all the interesting things going on in the legal world.